Hi guys, it's me, Trudy Lee. How's everybody doing? It is Friday, December the 13th. I shouldn't even have to look at the calendar because it's my grandson's birthday today. It's Friday the 13th. Ooh, and he turned 13 years old today. Ooh, he's not a he's not a little boy anymore. He's a teenager. Yeah, I can't believe it. He's in the seventh grade. Uh, I have a guest bedroom. My daughter, she lived here when he was just first born. And all my children have used the guest bedroom as um, a place to measure their kids as they're growing. <laughs> so every year on his birthday, she was here a couple of days ago and she said, it's close enough to your birthday. Get over here. And she measured him. He is five, nine and a half. Can you believe it? Um, my granddaughter's 5'10", the one that's 16, so he's almost as tall as her, and it's so cute. So they are, they're three years apart. Gosh, I can't believe she was that young. When he was born, she was three years old, and I have a picture of her and her sister holding him when he was a newborn little boy. It, it was so cute. He was a little baby boy. And now he's as tall as her. He's as big as her. Three years ago makes it not that much difference, you know. As a, when, you know, when you all get grown up, it's not that much difference anymore. Um, okay, I'm, I'm going to put my, I'm going to stop this really quickly. My dogs are going crazy out here. I'm, let me see what's going on. Okay. It is so beautiful here today, y'all. It's in the 70s, upper 70s. It's gorgeous. I have my windows and my doors open and everything. So my dog thinks he needs to bark at every little thing he hears. So sorry for the interruption. Uh, what what I was wanting to do was, you know, I wanted to do a little bit of a reading on um, what's going on, the impeachment hearing. So have you all been watching that? I've watched some of it. Um Sorry about the dog, y'all. I've watched some of it, but, you know, not all of it because I have a lot of things to do. I have, you know, we're getting ready for Christmas. Are, have y'all done your Christmas shopping? Is, are you getting ready? I'm going to see my mom. Uh, I'm going to be going there tomorrow. So I've had to get everything all ready. I have uh, all my sisters and everybody, my brother, all the kids are over there and everything. So I got to get all the gifts ready. So that's kind of what I've been doing. Did a lot of ordering online and just picking it up and having it sent to the house. That helps. Um, okay. So, oh, last night, I want to tell y'all, last night, this is what I saw last night. Now, I know the hearing went on and on and on last night. I mean, how could you watch it? It's just, it was just ridiculous. You know, I moved to strike the last thing that was said. They just, I don't even understand how, how does that help anything? But they're just running down the all the republicans do they i used to think that trump was a reflection of the republicans but really the republicans are a reflection donald trump is a reflection you know what i mean it's it's that energy and negativity that they have that have allowed that kind of a president to come into uh power here and power, he does have. He does. And he tries to wield it. But this is what I saw last night. It was before um, before that I heard. I wasn't watching it because we have a guest. We've had a guest here for a couple of days. So I wasn't really watching it. But I, I heard that um, they decided not to vote. And I didn't even know that they hadn't voted or anything. But I decided they decided not to vote. And I saw right before that, I saw I got a vision. I got a flash. And I saw um, that Matt Gates, you know, he was high-fiving Trump. He high-fives Trump and Trump says, God, I, got, I have to say it nicely, y'all, because it was, he used foul language. He said, we're going to get those MFers. That's what he said. We're going to get those MFers. And I think he means uh, the Democrats in the House that are impeaching him. That's what I think he, he's talking about. He says, we're going to get them. And that's just my vision. That's what I saw. Um, so when they impeach him, you know, they're going to vote on it, I guess, next week. And 
they're, they're going to they're going to vote on those articles of impeachment they passed today and when this happens it's like uh things start going sideways for Trump in Trump's world you know what i mean this this really it does a number on him he, it really does a number on him and uh i see things going sideways for him you know and then he starts i mean like he hasn't already but he really starts acting like a dictator after that because he's he's so angry he gets so angry and upset about this that he's really i see him like uh he's dressed like like a Saddam Hussein like in that green fatigue that's what he looks like he looks like Saddam Hussein and you know he's ordering everybody around you know he's acting like a dictator which i'm sure that's that's how he acts anyway but it's even worse it's even worse now which is really weird because you would think hello your behavior is what's getting you in trouble but he doesn't seem to understand that okay um thing i i'm seeing things in red outline when i see things in red outline this means this is a health issue for me. So I feel like Trump's going to have some kind of health issue because everything is outlined in red. So, you know, stress can do horrible things to you, can make you really sick. And I feel like he's going to have something going on here with his health. But I see, uh, I see him being completely wrapped in bubble wrap he's laying down and they're wrapping him up. They're wrapping up his body. They're wrapping up his arms. They're wrapping him, wrapping him. He's so wrapped up in bubble wrap. He can't even stand up. They have to, they have to hold him up. They have to help him get up and hold him up because he's like totally wrapped up in bubble wrap. Uh, I think this is the Republicans continuing to protect him. They're going to continue to protect him. So, you know, and they're going to prop him up. They're going to prop him up and prop him up and protect him and help him. And then I'm, I'm getting shown that, but the facts will bear out and all Trump's deeds will be reflected back upon him. So even if the Senate doesn't uh, convict him, which of course they're not, you know, they're not going to impeach him. I say convict, it's not legal. It's not a legal court. But even if, even though they don't impeach him, this is, I see mirrored glasses, mirrored glasses. And I, I think um, this is, his behavior is going to be reflected back in history. You know what I mean? History is not going to be kind to Trump. It really isn't. Um, and, and believe it or not, after this impeachment goes through, through the House, the Republican's voice gets louder and louder and louder. So y'all think you've heard some horrible things come out of their mouths? You, you think you heard it all? Get ready. Hold on. It's going to get worse. Believe it or not, it gets louder and louder and louder, and they don't care how much they trample on our Constitution. Um. When I, when I ask Spirit to show me about, you know, uh, show me the Senate hearing, show me the impeachment hearing, everything is washed in red. It's all a washed in red. There's a hole in this redness that I see. There's a hole, a, bit, a hole about this size. I see there's some people looking through that hole. They can see clearly. Everybody else, oh, they're seeing anger. Everybody's so mad. That's what it is. Everybody's looking through this. They're so angry and they're seeing red. So they're not seeing clearly. But there are a few that are seeing clearly that are looking through this hole. And this slowly, this hole is starting to get bigger. But it's um, it's it's just ripping little by little by little. It's very, you know what I mean? Little by little.
This is this is strange. Okay, so I see I see like a whale. I see a whale diving down in the water. It dives down deep, deep in the water. And uh, it comes back up and water blows from the, it's blowhole from the spout, you know. Um, I think this is just the Republicans diving deep to save Trump. They are diving deep. <laughs> and they are about to blow a gasket. And like I said, you think that you've heard some rude things coming out of their mouths. You've heard nothing. It's going to be a whole big assault. It's going to even get worse. They are going to be spouting off. That's what this is. They're spouting off. I mean, terrible, terrible. It's just so negative. Very, very negative. Um, I see... Uh, There are there are some senators that, you know, are kind of leaning the other way. They're they're looking at things clearly. Put it that way. They're seeing things more clearly, but there's so much blowback on them. I mean, so much. I'm seeing like a face to face with like an umpire that made a bad call and, you know, a coach or a player and they're like face to face, you know, with the umpire face to face because they're so mad and they're yelling at each other face to face. That's how I see this. Uh, any of the senators that even, you know, remotely are thinking about voting to impeach Trump, they're getting this right in their face, right in their face. I mean, really bad. They're just, they're not letting up on them. So, you know, it it looks like the Senate will impeach Trump for sure because, I mean, they're just, they're radical. They are radical. <laughs> and, you know, that's, they're just, they're just going to, they're not going to take, uh, they're not going to take any 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 of the senators, they won't take a yes from them, you know, yes to impeach. They won't allow it. They really won't. They just won't allow it. They won't allow people just to vote how they feel. It, it's not going to happen. Not going to happen. So, I mean, no surprises, right? No surprises there. We kind of thought that's what was going to happen, but I really wanted to look and see what spirit would show me. So that's what I saw. That's what I get, guys. You guys know I went and had my eyebrows done on um, Wednesday. It's only Friday, so it's it's just a little over 24 hours that I've had them done. It might be 48 hours now, barely, but maybe 48 hours. I mean, they look good from a distance, <laughs> but believe me, they are uh, they they have ointment all over them, and they're they're uh, all yucky. They're yucky. They're not good yet. They might look good from a distance, but believe me, you don't want to see them up close. So so far, so good. They have good shape. Um, uh, they've told me not to wipe them. I can't like clean it. I can't use a wash rag on it and wash it or anything like that. I'm, I can't wash my hair or anything for a week, for one week. So, you know, I washed my hair on Wednesday <laughs> before I went. I'm like, I better wash my hair. What last chance I'll get because I knew what was coming up, you know. So anyway, this is microblading and it's just made them thicker. You know, I, I have to always color them in with a pencil or a shadow or something and I'm tired of it. And I just wanted to try this because my niece did it and hers looked good. And I was like, well, I'm going to go do that too. And that's my Christmas present for my husband. He paid for it. And you know what? I got it on a Groupon and I got a really good deal. I really got a good deal. And, uh, or my husband did because he, uh, he paid for it. And you know what the lady said? I mean, I've heard this before, but I wish she hadn't told me because it really affected me. She said, this Groupon is killing me. <laughs> Because, you know, I, I, I don't know what kind of agreement you have to make to get on Groupon, but it must be a painful one where, you know, they give a discount and you have to suck it up or something. I don't know. I don't I don't know how it works, but you're, it's supposed to be that you get your name out there. Right. And you, you got to honor the Groupon. You're the one that did it. So it made me feel really bad. It, I, I felt really bad because my appointment was at 10 o'clock. And the lady didn't, 
I was sitting there waiting for her and my daughter came with me and I'm nervous. I'm scared. I'm a scaredy cat. Anything that has to do with, you know, um, any kind of, a, you know, surgical like procedure is scary to me. I, you know, I don't like to be messed with. I don't even like people to cut my hair. I don't even like to have my nails done. I mean, I don't like people touching me in that way at all. I really don't. Hugs are good, but, you know, not like that. Anyway, so I, I brought my, my uh, sorry, I brought my um, daughter with me to sit with me and wait. The lady was 30 minutes late getting there. We were just sitting there waiting in the salon, waiting, and the people were like, she's not here yet. She's not here yet. I'm like, oh, my God, this lady can't even make it to her, the appointment on time. She was like, another Groupon. I hate it. So she was like being careless. So I was so nervous in the beginning anyway. And then she came 30 minutes late and my daughter was like, how are you feeling? And I'm like, not good. <laughs> I was really nervous. And then um, we live in San Antonio. And so there's a lot of people that are from Mexico. She was from Mexico and her, her English wasn't perfect. You know, it was kind of not that great. <laughs> and her instructions for me were all in Spanish. And I was like, oh, my God, <laughs> I was really nervous, y'all, intense. She was super sweet. She was a very pretty lady. Her eyebrows were done nicely. She, um, I mean, her, that was her second language. I, I don't I don't mind. I don't mind that if she didn't speak perfect English, that was fine. I don't care. She, she communicated fine. She was just fine. But I was a little bit nervous because... She was upset about the group on and she was late. And I was just like, I had read that it takes like three hours to do. And she was finished in an hour and a half. <laughs> so I was kind of, I was nervous. I was so nervous laying there. I was so tense. And my daughter was staying in the room with me and she asked my daughter to leave. And I was like, oh my God. So she was supposed to film it. She didn't take any pictures because she was told to leave. And I was feeling really nervous. She put on some music to make me relax, you know, some water sounding kind of music, you know, nothing, not real music, music, just, you know, one of those things for relaxation. And I kept telling myself, she numbed my eyebrows. I couldn't feel nothing. It didn't hurt at all, y'all. It didn't hurt. But I kept telling myself, relax, relax. I had to keep reminding myself, but I kept stiffening up. You know, I'm laying on a bed. It's very comfortable. I'm laying on a bed and I'm so nervous that I'm making myself shake. I am totally, you know, shuddering. <laughs> and I have to keep telling myself, stop it. Stop. Calm down. Everything's fine. You can feel her digging in your eye. You're like, <laughs> you can hear that scraping sound and it's, oh my gosh. And I would be like, I would tell myself, she's almost finished. She's almost finished, you know. The next day, yesterday when I woke up, I'm, I'm even nervous even talking about it, y'all. <laughs> I am. I'm, that's how, that was brave. I was brave to do that because I was scared out of my mind. I was so sore when I woke up. My arms were sore. Everything was sore. My butt is sore from clenching. <laughs> I was, that's how scared I was. I was so scared, you know. I know everything's going to be fine. I knew it was, everything was going to work out and be fine. I'm just a big chicken. I'm the biggest chicken in the world. So anyway, um, so far, so good. I'll let you know how it goes after there's um, scabbing and crusting to go through. And so in six weeks, I go back for a touch up. <laughs> I can only imagine when she has to touch it up and see me one more time. She's going to be like, oh, my God, the group on has come back to haunt me. So I feel really bad about it. I gave her a good tip. I don't know how much you would tip a person. I gave her a $50 tip and it was for an hour and a half service. So I, I hope that was enough. I hope she was pleased with, and I gave her a hug. <laughs> I hope that was enough. I don't know. My daughter is a hairstylist and I had talked to her and I said, how much should I give her? And she was telling me, well, you should at least give her like 30, $35. And I said, well, I'm going to give her $50. $50. So I hopefully she was happy with that. I don't know. We'll see. She, she didn't tell me nothing, but um, I think she just wanted to get me the hell out of there. So anyway, got any, any uh, microblading stories y'all want to relate? I'll be reading them. Okay. I'd love to hear any stories that y'all have. And 
any kind of aftercare, any kind of little tips you have on it. I, you know, I had to Google it because I don't read in Spanish and it to tell me what to do. She did tell me, she gave me a little pack of ointment. It's vitamin A and E, I think something like that ointment to put on my eyebrows. And she said, keep, keep the ointment, keep them moist all the time. So they're greasy and moist. Y'all can't see it, but they're real greasy and moist. So uh, she said, keep that for, you know, keep doing that for a week to 10 days until all that. She said, don't peel off the scab or anything. Let it fall off naturally. So I'm going out of town tomorrow. I hope they're not going to be too scabby looking. But I didn't think this through. I just went and did it. That's how I am. I had to just go do it, you know, and or if I think about it too long, I won't do it. I wouldn't do it. Even thinking about having to return for a touch up his, you know, it might be real hard for me to go back. <laughs> not that it was a bad, it wasn't bad at all. It doesn't hurt at all. You guys, it does not hurt. If they're doing it right, they're putting that numbing gel on and you, they put it, she put it on for a long time and then she'll do it again during the procedure. She puts more gel on and then she does the other eye, you know, that way you're always numb. As a matter of fact, after she did the second numbing, it was even more numb than the first. I didn't feel it at all. Do they do that for tattoos? Do they put a numbing gel on for tattoos? I was wondering about that. Yeah, that that would be a good thing to do. I don't think they did it for my husband. He, I watched him get a tattoo. He only has one. Uh, I told him that's your midlife crisis. <laughs> But uh, I was waiting for him to cry, and he never cried. It was a, I was a little bit um, upset that he didn't shed a tear because <laughs> I thought he would. But he took it like a man. He did good. Anyway, all right, guys. So, so far, that's what my eyebrows look like. I'll let you know, and you'll be seeing me in the future. And that's my reading on the um, impeachment for now for what's going on, okay? All right, guys. We'll talk to you soon. Have a beautiful weekend. Love you so much. If there's anybody or anything you'd like me to read on, let me know. Okay. All right. Bye for now. Do something kind for somebody. It'll always come back to you. Bye.